Hi folks, John Dunn here, RPG freelancer, publisher behind Melly Via. I'm up here today at Immortals Inc. with Mikey. What is going on, John? How do you feel about ninjas? Ninjas, I feel like they are shady. I feel like they are highly skilled, but I feel like they're shady. What about if they're wearing bright red? Are they less shady then? It gives me Kill Bill vibes. At I that mean, point. I can see that. And in that vein, we are going to talk about Pray for Death, which is a new, very ninja-themed adventure for Pathfinder Remastered that just came out. Wow, there we go. Yep. Uh, this is an adventure for 14th to 17th level characters, and they recommend that you make brand new ones for it because the characters are going to be ninjas, essentially. They are members of the Red Mantis Assassins Guild. Uh, they are worshippers of Achaikak, which I'm probably mangling, but that is the god of assassinations. Wow. What yep. a god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's pretty serious. So Vanessa Hoskins is the author on this. I think we've mentioned her before. She worked on scoured stars for path yes. for starfinder she worked on the pathfinder core books that we haven't talked about but we probably should at some point probably should uh she worked on abomination vaults and she worked on a lot of other stuff for paizo uh the characters over the course of the adventure they're going to start out at 14th level probably probably going to hit around 18th level by the end of it uh and they are assassins so not shockingly they're not nice guys wow yeah they're evil uh and shady and they are members of, like I said, the Red Mantis Guild, and this Red Mantis thing is real heavily themed. Mantis comes up a lot. The Red Mantis Guild uses, uh, well, if you think of a praying mantis, maybe you can toss up an image here of the four limbs of a praying mantis. You know how they've got those kind of serrated front claws? Yeah. Yeah. So the Red Mantis Guild of Assassins use these curved sawtooth blade swords that kind of mimic that. Great. And if you look at, there's a nice image of their deity in the back of the book. Again, mangling the name, I'm sure, Achekuk. Um, He is a terrifying giant red mantis with those sawtooth forearms. So yeah. Uh, traditionally, all the members of the guild are female. They're usually elves, humans, or half elves. But the book says, hey, you know, do what you want with that, right? Nice. Uh, and apparently this adventure is a lead-in for a book that's coming out in October for Pathfinder called War of the Immortals. Ooh. Yes. I think that gets some inspiration over here. Uh, it might. And you see a little bit of a spoiler here, but this is a book about a god of assassins. Maybe that god of assassins is going to be uh, doing things to trigger a war amongst the deities. Wow. I think we need to start a war here as well. Yeah. Let's avoid that. Yeah, let's avoid that. Yeah. Probably not a good idea. Uh, it's a four-chapter adventure structure. Before I dive into that and get into the spoilers, let me just tell you what else is in this book. So at the back of the book, uh, there's a section on Illis Magorti which is it's about seven pages long and this is basically a very evil town sandbox it's a town on an island uh, the island is media galti it's fairly isolated from the rest of galarian and it's a town that is loaded up with pirates and assassins and other assorted bad guys uh, the player characters are intended to just kind of blend in here right so there's lots of other bad guys for them to interact with uh, and factions for them to work with and, you know, meet and do horrible things to each other. Uh, there is also an adventure toolbox after that. It talks about the Red Mantis Magic School, assorted spells and magic items that tie into that, uh, more information on Media Galti Island, a nice history of the Red Mantis, a uh, write-up of a, a Chaikek, and uh, assorted monsters and NPCs. So there's a chunk of information here that could be just cool world building elements or you know things that you might throw into a campaign even if you're not using that adventure. All right, spoilers ho then as we dive right into the adventure itself. It is four chapters. The first one is called A Worthy Contract. 
and the characters for whatever reason are close to the person who is the appointed leader of the Red Mantis Guild. It may be that they've had some cool accomplishments or maybe she taught them or who knows what. Uh, there's a lot of options that are described here and there it's worth mentioning. There are a lot of options in the intro section with advice on how to keep a party of um, really unrepentantly evil people working together towards a common goal. And that's that's can be an issue. Certainly one I've encountered in the past when game mastering. But these characters who do have loyalty to the guild and to the guild leader uh, are assigned to assassinate a warlord. And it's a warlord who is hanging out in his fortress in the north, several thousand miles away from uh, Elis Megorti, where the Red Mantis make their fortress. So the player characters have to get there, find him, probably either sneak or fight their way through the fortress and then kill this big bad warlord. Assuming they manage to do that, and he is tougher than they are at 14th level, they become marked for death because this whole job was just a setup. Uh, and you find out that there are traitors within the Red Mantis Leadership Council who actually sent them on this job and that they're the ones uh, responsible for the assignment and for setting the PCs up to take the fall when after they kill this guy. And now, in fairness, the guy is bad. The characters shouldn't really have any qualms about killing him. Uh, but he uh, may have been respected by some other entities who are going to give the characters a rather hard time for killing him. <sighs> yeah. So that brings us up to the second act where the characters need to figure out who it was in the guild that set them up to fail and dispatched another team of assassins uh, to kill them. Yeah, that was the part I didn't mention at the end of the first mm, act. A whole lot of assassinations. Yes, the assassins killing assassins. It's very um, ninja. Assassin yeah. assassinations. It is. It is. So they head back to Illis Magorty and they probably get some help getting back. They've got an NPC who offers to teleport them and most likely they'll head back there that way. Uh, and then they need to do some legwork so they can clear their names and then go before the ruling council of the Red Mantis Guild and stand trial. And through the course of this act, they do find hard evidence that there is a plot to overthrow the Red Mantis leadership. And the person behind this is a member of the leadership council who just happens to be the high priestess of Achaikek. Again, mangling pronunciation. It's a weird word. I don't know. Yeah, I, it's A C H A E K E K. It doesn't just roll off the tongue for me. No, I think I would do worse. Fair enough. But anyway, <laughs> the high priest of the god of assassins, since I can't pronounce it, uh, is Achaikek? in fact Achaikek. the one who is yeah is in fact the one who was setting them up. Somebody so we find that out the at comments. the end of Act Three, and the players are sent to go deal with her. So, yeah. So in Act 4, we've got Secrets of the Mantis, we've got the traitors revealed, and the PCs are sent to go into the Grand Library. Well, the Grand Library is this sacred part of the Red Mantis Temple that only the head of the Order is ever allowed to go into. So, yeah, right? Pretty so, special privilege here. Very special privilege, right? But they get to go in there because they found out that these traitors have already gone in there. And well, the head of the order isn't there to disarm all the traps and mysteries and challenges that you need to get through just to get through the place. Ironic. Yeah, you know, shocking. So it's sacred, it's forbidden, and there are many trials that the player characters have to get through. Feels kind of like a fighting game. At yeah, this point, it does. Right? Kind of like a ninja game where the you yeah. know you're doing your martial arts trials. Not a coincidence. Was that Ruby Fist when you had to do the levels? It was. Yeah. The, the Fury of the Ruby Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix. Fist of the Ruby Phoenix. Yeah. Same kind of feel here, uh, except you're higher level at this point. Yeah, what do you say? Uh, what did you say? What level was it again? 14th is where you're oh, starting yeah. out, and you're going to level up as you go through. So oh, by yeah. the time you're in Act 2 here, you're 15. Uh, and then they have to fight their way, not just to the final room of the uh, Grand Library, but ultimately to the Plain of Elysium. So Elysium is one of the outer planes where the gods hang out. <laughs> Leading into the War of the Immortals. Not shocking, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, so then they get to Elysium and they get to the next act. This is Act 3, A Deity's Duty. Yes. Where they travel to the plains of Elysium to try and catch these conspirators who they're after. 
and the entire part of this act takes place in a specific portion of Elysium called the Clashing Shore. So it's like a beach area with a blood red ocean. It's right a pretty there. epic name. It is. It is. And the Clashing Shore just happens to be the place that belongs to Gorum. And Gorum is the god of war. Right. So they have to fight their way through a whole lot of other bad guys here and eventually fight the traitor, uh, the high priest of the assassins, God. And presumably they defeat her because that battle is going to be to the death. Maybe they just managed to knock her over unconscious somehow, but it's kind of assumed they're assassins. They're going to kill her, right? Kill everybody else. Yeah. Uh, and after they do that, while they're here in the plain of Gorm, the god of war, they get to see the god of assassins rise up from the ocean and shank him. Yeah, so the god of assassins kills the god of war. Wow. Yeah, I really think this is a real strong setup for that whole War of Immortals book, yeah. right? Yeah, okay. Kind of a cool lead in and a setting changing event really here. Uh, and then the PCs get the hell out of dodge right <laughs> yeah, probably possibly should. probably with the body of the traitor in hand uh and come back to meet with the sur the surviving members of the red mantis council pass judgment on the traitors if they if they're not already dead at this point they're killed because and you know we got a judge it's all just right yeah, yeah. Duh. uh and the pcs are offered positions on the ruling council of the red mantis order real big deal in the lives of these characters as they go from being you know field operatives to members of the ruling council but also real big deal in the realm of galarian as the god of war dies yeah and so, uh yeah yeah so it is kind of a setting changing adventure here if you are deeply invested in galarian this could be a really cool adventure to run for your characters just to see how they alter the world around them uh conversely if you don't want them to actually be the ones to change it it might be worth reading this because then you can see things that are happening in the background and be ready to accommodate that within your campaign in either case uh it's a well put together adventure it's got some great artwork inside as we've come to expect from paizo products some solid maps as well uh, and it is 45 bucks in hardcover, full color from Paizo, and I think about 124 pages. Let me double check that. But uh, yeah, about 124 pages. Stop in, take a look at it. We got it on the shelf here at Immortals. We're available at ImmortalsLink.com. Very well said, John. I mean, you rejoice, and then there's an all-out war. So it's like, it's are a you, setup, did man. anybody even win? Clearly not. Check it out, guys. Thanks for watching. Till next time, folks. Good gaming. Thank you.